Hi guys, welcome to Facebook Live. I'm your host, Rose. And I'm your host, Lauren. And we have Kristen here today, which you may have seen uh, for previous Facebook Lives. Kristen is our resident expert of all things uh, career searching. So today we're gonna be going over a new year, new career, and what that entails when you're looking for a job, resume, resume tips and interview tips and all that fun stuff. But before we jump in, Lauren, will you go over the do's and don'ts of today while we're hanging out? Sure. So do um, like and follow us and share this with your friends uh, because of everything that happened in 2020. 2021 is a bit of a unique year for finding jobs and interviewing. So hopefully this episode is really helpful to you and maybe to your friends as well. So please share it so that everyone can participate in gaining some knowledge and tips and advice today. Um, don't put any of your personal information in the comments though. Um, so if you do have a question specific to you or your program, please call us at student services at 1-888-427-1000. If you're not a Penn Foster student just yet, but are looking to become one, call admissions at 1-888-427-6500 and we'd be happy to chat with you about your career and education goals. Um, but aside from not putting any personal information in the comments, do feel free um, to ask questions or tell us about your own career journey. Um, give us some feedback. We'd love to hear from you guys. Yep, and throw some of your goals, uh, your career goals yeah. for 2021 in the comments. We'd love to see them. We'd love to see where you are in your career search or in your career path. Um, let us know because it's it's uh, both fun for us, but also, you know, hopefully we can help you with a few things if you need it. So, oh, now for the big unveiling, Kristen is here. <laughs> Uh, she is our talent acquisition associate. And Kristen, do you want us to tell us like a fun fact about you before we, we jump in? <laughs> fun fact. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, a fun fact is I'm a mother to a four and a half year old during a very, very interesting <laughs> pandemic. So it's been a little bit interesting to um, navigate life like that as a mom. So that's a fun fact. Um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people lately. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people are relating to that, you know, being at home with kids and it's it is a new interesting thing to experience working with your kids around, you know. Yeah, it doesn't matter what age they are. If they're older, if they're they're younger, uh, there's still those challenges of trying to manage work or school with your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything else. So, yeah, it's it's been in, a, in an interesting ride. But there's a lot of blessings in it too. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's... yeah, I thank you so much for having me. I always love doing this. It's always um, really meaningful to me to be able to do this um, because I've been on both sides of it. So it's 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 fulfilling. And um, hopefully today the information we talk about will be helpful to you, especially in light of the recent uh, world crisis of the pandemic. I don't want to crisis, but, you know, uh, interviewing is the skills are still the same, but um there's a different element now. We have to add in the factor of COVID and, and how interviews may change just a little bit because of that. So what we don't cover today, we can do in a follow-up, but I'll try to give you a wealth of information and summarize it in a concise way and then give you resources to be able to um, reach out if you should need help from us because we're here to support you and help you. So yeah. thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you in advance for sharing all of your expertise and knowledge. You have so much experience interviewing and hiring. So you're the perfect person to talk to, to share advice on what makes a candidate really stand out and advice on how to land a job. So um, we'll get into our first question for you, which is what do hiring managers look for when they are considering um, job candidates? Well, I mean, what they're first looking for initially is your personality. I mean, it, it, it's about the skills too. It's about what you know about the company. So they're looking to see, have you done research about the company? Do you, after reading the job description and applying for the job, do you have 
a somewhat clear understanding of what the job entails, not in detail, because that's their job to tell you, right? But you should know the, the name of the position you're applying for and what skills you bring into that position. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that your skills and your abilities and your personality is in alignment with what they're looking for. So they're looking for a culture fit. So they're, they're not only assessing, can you do the job? Uh, do you have the skills to do the job? But can I work? Do I want to work with you? Are you the kind of person I want to work with every day? Because um, they want to make sure that you're going to fit in with the company and with that team specifically. So um, they're looking for motivation, uh, passion towards whatever it is that their goal is, their mission. Like, for example, our mission is helping students, right? Just like we're doing right now. Um, so when I'm interviewing someone, I'm looking for them to express their understanding of the value of education, right? An interest in helping people succeed, finding a rewarding experience in whatever it is that's what we're doing, right? Maybe people want to work here because they like education. Maybe they want to grow within the company. Maybe they're, they're, they want to be a graphic designer and work for us. It, it, there's, there's varying uh, degrees in, in a company. So they're looking for, do you want to professionally grow? What is your work ethic? What is your motivation? And if you're going to be a good culture fit and have the skills and ability to do the job. And when you say personality, that doesn't mean that you can't be like a shyer type, right? That's more about how you would fit as far as uh, teamwork and things like that. Right, right. So it's about, yeah, it's not about if, if you're shy, that's OK. Um, they're going to want to see that you're passionate about what you do, you do, but also that you have a collaboration um, aspect. So if they it's OK that you're shy, but be confident and willing to answer the questions, because if it feels like they're pulling teeth out, pulling teeth to get answers from you, they're not really getting to know you. Um, so try your best to step outside of that comfort zone, be confident, practice if you need to, practice in front of a mirror. Uh, we have a uh, career coach, Jamie Kapalko here, who can help you do that and practice. So you want to um, be able to express yourself and be genuine about it. I think Is that's what it's, oh, sorry, Lauren, go ahead. <laughs> Is there anything that's commonly done in interviews that kind of sounds out as, bad or not really a good practice that you can think of? Um, one one practice is, or one thing I think you should, and this is, I'll, I'll touch a little bit on video interviews, um, because the more we get into COVID, the more you're going to have likelihood that you're going to have uh, a video interview, just like you're seeing me now. So um, to stay engaged. So this is what I would say in a regular interview anyway, stay engaged, show, give eye contact, and don't be looking around the room and talking to someone off camera, be engaged, show body language. So the things that are, are that would put me off is if they don't show good body language, if they talk negative about a previous employer, if they seem like they have a negative attitude about life in general, um, if they don't seem to want the job for the right reasons, um, if they don't seem motivated to want to work for the company or understand the mission of what we're doing, um, and they just seem like they just only want to just a job or any job, um, because quite frankly, the competition is fierce. So I'll be talking to many other people who want that job and will, and would appreciate that time that we give them and uh, really want to do a good job. So to show enthusiasm and motivation is important. So someone who lacks that or or quite frankly, if your phone is going off or buzzing the whole time, there's those little things that that really make a difference because you're being compared to other people. It so, sounds like a bad date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Not so, paying attention. I mean, right. So you just have to be aware and um, yeah, if they seem if they don't seem truly interested in being part of this team, right? Then I I move on. I know a common question is why do you want this job? And I'm sure a common answer could be around needing money or wanting the salary. Um, do you think it's important to make sure that you have a better answer than that, or is there a way to talk about that? What do you What do you think about that question? 
the salary question or the question of like um, why do you want this job because I know you mentioned like showing that you want to be part of the team and being Mm -hmm. genuine around wanting to work for that company so your best answer would be and we'll get to the salary in a second would be how is this in alignment with your career goals how what skills and, and values do you bring to to the organization what can what can you do for this organization how does their job description apply to things you've done in the past so why do you want this job it's a good opportunity for me i believe i can add value to your company because i have these specific skills and they're the skills the skills you're saying are the skills that are on their job description mm-hmm. right Right. So um, that's how you answer the question. Your goals are in alignment with what their business needs are. It's a win-win. Um, if you want to ask about salary, you you would ask that towards the end. And just, you know, because they're interviewing, you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. They don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste their time. And you could say something like, I, I noticed the salary wasn't listed on your website or your job description. Um, I want to be sure I'm not wasting your time. What is the starting salary for this position? It's okay to ask that. I get asked that all the time. Um, I don't think it's weird to ask that. I don't think it's rude. I don't think it's uh, presumptuous because, quite frankly, everybody needs money, right? Uh, It's important that you know what the salary is. And it's okay to ask. It's okay to ask what their COVID practices are. It's okay to ask if you have to go to the office, you know, in this situation. So. Sorry, I feel like I'm rambling, but no, that's I, long and short I of think it. That that's so valuable because it's it's stressful to talk about salary. I think it's that one thing that like you don't want to talk about because it's just like, what if they think I'm in they're interviewing me just for the money? Like I want them to know I value the job, but if I bring up salary, are they gonna think I'm only focused on salary and does that take away from this interview? So it is interesting to know that hiring managers get asked that all the time and they totally expect it and that you shouldn't feel awkward bringing it up. You um, shouldn't, but you should not say it right away. You shouldn't right. <laughs> say right off the bat. Like if I say, oh, do you have any questions? Well, what does it pay? You got to kind of, you know, wait till the end, ask. It's okay to ask. It's okay to ask. Just wait until the end when you've already expressed your interest, your motivation, your passion, your skills. You've already kind of talked to them about that stuff. So right. You don't want to waste their time, right? If you have a certain budget in mind and they're paying way less than that, you need to know that. And they don't want to waste their time interviewing if you can't take the job anyway. Right. Like if you're on the third interview and. You oh, yeah, you should definitely. Yeah, you should definitely ask if you don't ask on the phone, if they call you definitely ask during the interview process. If they interview you on the phone, ask, but if they do a, a, a like a video interview, you should not leave that interview before you know the salary. So as far as talking about, um, you know, things that employers are looking for, you know, we had talked about a little bit of the soft skills, like personality and ways to answer questions well in interviews and stuff like that. But as far as the skills that students are picking up at Penn Foster, uh, what what skills or education do managers look for on a resume? to get noticed to go to the interview in the first place. Right. So the first thing about a resume, as I will say, is the format is really important. Before you even have what's on there, most res- uh, most managers are taking about, <clears throat> excuse me, two to three seconds. I know that sounds crazy to scan a resume real quick. So wow. like That's so five fast. Three seconds at the most, they're just looking at it, right? And I'm guilty of it too. And it's not even guilty. It's like, you're looking at it. If it, if the format is so difficult to read, um, it's really off-putting. So you want a, a resume that's easy to read where titles and like job titles and time frames stand out mm-hmm. and responsibilities stand out. So um, so it's important that you have a, a good format, but what they're looking to see is how your experience either in life or in job relates to what they're looking for. So they're looking right away, they're looking at your job, at your job history. They're looking at the length of time you've spent at each job and what kind of duties you had in that job and see if that matches up for the for the thing, for their description. Right. Now they're also looking at your education. If if you are if you haven't graduated yet, you can list that you're pursuing that degree, and then you can list relevant coursework. Um, 
in some of the classes that you took that would re only relate to that job. And this is where a career coach at Penn Foster could help you as well. So when you're first getting out of school, you don't have maybe a lot of work experience in that field yet, right. but you do have applicable things that you've learned and skills that you've learned that you can put that relevant coursework on there that can make it. So you're highlighting a skills section for yourself um, that calls attention to the manager. So you also have a format that's easy to read, your duties and jobs, the length of time and your skills. I can read that within five seconds. I know if you're, I know if I at least, if you're worth a phone call. Right. So if you're, if you are looking to get an office job and you previously worked in retail, you could put great customer service skills or something like that, that relates to both of those things. So at a glance, it might seem like these are unrelated, but then that would be like, oh, we need that. We need someone with good customer service skills because right. you know it's like we have a lot of customers in this office or whatever it is. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, even putting volunteer work on there, that sh that's huge. That shows initiative. That shows willingness to help people. That shows like you're not selfish. There's a lot of things that says without saying any, you know, just having it on there without you even having to say that. So those things, if you do volunteer work, put that on your resume. Mm -hmm. It, it really will it'll help you stand out. Sorry. Is there a way to showcase um, a little bit the education that you've earned at Penn Foster on your resume? Um, I would put the education first ahead of the work okay. experience. Okay, that's interesting. If your student education is going to go first and then work experience, if you've already, I mean, it could be different if you're in a different phase of your life. Okay. It's, that's interesting because, you know, usually when you see a template, like if you downloaded a resume template, it usually has education at the bottom. So it is interesting for some, in some placements, it might be better to put it at the top. Like if you don't have a lot of job history in that field, would that yeah. be a good so time? You, you always lead with your strength. So if your strength is the education that you've just completed with all your certifications in your classes mm -hmm. is the higher strength of your experience, then that's going to go first. If okay. your experience at work outweighs your education right now, that's going to go first. So always lead with strengths. That's really good that advice. Sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you think it's important to tailor your resume to each job you apply for just to make sure those skills and experiences do match up to the yes. job description? Yes. I would say look at the job description every time. See what skills you have. on. They're, they're going to have a little list, right, of you need to have these things. Do you have those things? If so, go go put that in your skills section on your resume. Now you don't want 20 bullet points of skills. I'd say, you know, like not eight or nine, 10 at the most. You can switch those in and out as you need. Um, but yeah, your resume should be kind of customized every time for the and job description. You, should you use words pulled directly from the job description and put in them right in some cases if it applies. If it sounds like you're just trying to do that, it, no, okay. but if, if it says business analytics and you have business analytics, put it on there. Okay. Um, some applicant tracking systems pick up keywords. So whereas, you know, mine doesn't, I look at every resume, I can search by keywords, et cetera. Um, some applicant tracking systems are used by big companies to filter and screen applications. So the more keywords that match their job posting, they can filter them into someone's inbox where it gets read by a real person. So, but you be careful not to overload it with those words um, because then it could come across like you're just copying their job description and putting it on your resume. Right. Yeah. And you probably want to be able to back up any of those skills. Oh, yeah. Specifications because yeah. you'll likely get asked about them in the interview, I'm sure. You can't put skills on there that you don't have. So if you look at the this job description and you see skills that you have, then that's what you're going to put on there. That's really good advice. So speaking of the interview process, I know, you know, we've been talking about how COVID has impacted applying to and finding jobs. How has COVID impacted the interview process specifically? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What was that? My phone, my, my connection's not. One sec. No worries. It's the it's how the world functions now, right? It's so always this is a good fun. example of if you're in the middle of an interview and something gets a little funky, <laughs> just say, "Hang on a second, my I have a tech issue. Can you say that again?" And it's okay to say, "Can you say that again?" 
Yeah. So can you say that again? <laughs> sure, you're already starting off with a perfect tip um, to answer your <laughs> question. Um, but it was, how has COVID impacted the interview process? How has the interview process changed to oh. kind of meet how we're operating in the world yeah. now? It's so vastly different. So we used to, you know, most employers used to have you come in for an interview. They'd maybe walk around with you. You'd meet people. You would maybe take an assessment of some kind. It depends on what the job is, right? They'll, they'll, they'll interview you. You'll sit face to face. Um, it's just not like that anymore for the most part. No, a lot of jobs are still in person. Um, and it's like any other interview, you know, you, you dress appropriately, you conduct yourself with, you know, in a professional way, but with COVID, especially you're going to be doing more videos. So it's important that you have a device that works with a camera, um, it, whether it's a phone, a laptop, an iPad, whatever it is, make sure that you have something that works and that you're familiar with using it. So if you are sent an email with a link asking you to log into a video meeting like this, it could be just like this, log in and, and do a video interview. Um, you're going to want to test your equipment, make sure you can open that link ahead of time, make sure your background is somewhat reasonable for yourself, you know, that you're not embarrassed of it or whatever, you know, so it's maybe quiet. Take down the monkey? <laughs> oh, are you embarrassed of the monkey? No, I'm not. <laughs> I think it's cute. So, but I mean, you want to be in a quiet place. You want to be in a place where they can see you, you know, it's not super dark, not where you're, you're like way over here and they can't see you. Um, and I'm, I'm giving you this advice because this, this has happened, you know, where the someone has it on the phone and I see the ceiling fan the whole time. Um, so I want to see your face and I want to see your body language. I want to see your enthusiasm. I want to know that you're able to log into the meeting, use the equipment, communicate effectively. So it's even more important now than ever that your communication skills are excellent, right? You're going to be emailing, you're going to be in text or chat with people. Um, you're, you're talking like this. You need to be able to communicate effectively um, and have decent, like pretty good computer skills now. There's an emphasis on computer skills now because it is remote. And yeah, the vaccine's out and everything. And we think maybe COVID will slow down, but chances are there's, I mean, I know Penn Foster's closed until July. So the fact is, is there's going to be a lot of working from home. You're going to need to be able to be tech savvy, computer savvy to get ahead of that competition in some cases to be able to get the job. So if you're needing to brush up on computer skills or communication skills, um, you know, there's, you can Google some things and do some tutor tutorials or call Jamie. She can help you with some things getting prepared. But um, I think, yeah, just having a place where they can see you speak clearly they can hear you. I think a big thing is to like tell your whole family that that's going to happen, that you're having an interview. Oh. Make sure everyone knows this is a quiet time, that you need your own space. You Everyone just stay away, you know, like lock the door, put do not disturb on it, whatever you have to do to, to make sure that your focus is on that interview. Because I could see that, you know, like you were saying, you have a four and a half year old at home. So, yeah, <laughs> like, I you know, it's navigating in here at any point and and like right. oh you know so you have to kind of yeah plan have a plan prepare um and have your resume handy because the manager may ask you to walk through it um i know i do for a lot of people i you know i tell them about myself and then i say you know what let's walk through your resume tell me about your skills blah 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 so and that's a that's your time to shine that's your time to talk about um what you've done what you bring to the table and that's what they want to hear. And also sit up in your chair. Sit up straight in your chair. Do not sit like this. <laughs> because it, it just shows, and I'm only saying it, and it sounds like common sense, but I'm only saying it because I've interviewed people who did that. And it really just gave me the impression that they didn't really care about, care enough to show respect. And that's another thing mm -hmm. about dressing up too. Dress as you would if you would as if you would go to the office and interview them there. Um, you're dressing in interview clothes, at least from the waist up. <laughs> and um, don't stand up unless you have dress pants on too. <laughs> yeah, if you have your cat pajamas on, just leave them. Still, don't, don't stand up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so be professional, dress professional, have a professional email address, 
Make sure your voicemail is set up on your phone uh, in case employers call you back. Um, all those little things can can be just that much, give you that much more of an edge. It's great advice. Are there any tips you have to prepare specifically for a phone interview where maybe you're not on video, just phone yeah. interview etiquette? Yeah, I would say make sure your phone is charged and ready to go. If you have the voicemail set up in case, you know, employers are trying to call you. If you do get the phone call, um, step into a private place, go and in, go into a place where people can't hear you. Where there's not going to be a lot of background noise and take the phone call there and, you know, speak clearly, show enthusiasm. Always, always. You want this job, right? You want this right. job and I can bring these skills to your job and I'm ready for it. And that's the attitude you need to go in with and you're confident about it. So speaking of skills you're bringing to the job, um, what skills are employers really looking for right now? They're looking for, I mean, we talked about computer skills and, and communication skills. I, I look for people to be positive, positive attitudes, overcoming hurdles, um, being authentic, being very authentic, wanting to help people and, show, and, and really just motivation says a lot. Um, focusing on the things that you bring. So, um, sorry, I'm, I have my notes here and I just want to make sure I didn't miss any. <laughs> so yeah, so because I have a lot written on this and I didn't want to forget anything. So there's like a group of core things that you're, they're looking for in every, in every interview. And that's your reliability, right? Can you show up on time? Are you going to go to meetings on time? Are you going to log in when you're supposed to? You're, you need to be there for your team, especially if it's a remote job. Um, they, you really count on each other to be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be, which is online. Again, your communication skills. Uh, independence. So ability to work on your own without being having someone over your shoulder, especially if it's a remote position. Um, showing initiative. So initiative, you know, you could show by proactively raising some questions while you're in the interview um, and following up with a thank you note or a call afterwards. These all demonstrate initiative without you having to do anything else. Um, collaboration, as I had mentioned before, they want to see that you'll be able to do that. And conflict resolution skills. This is more important than ever now. So things can be misconstrued or misunderstood in an email or a text. We're doing a lot of this slacking back and forth and messaging back and forth, right? right? So being able to deal with conflict is something that employers are really focusing more on now in this remote world. So just be very, very um, mindful of that. So um, conflicts can get amplified. And if you can quickly sense and unravel any any um, conflicts, that's going to be really important for that inter for that interviewer to hear. That's so, really And nice. again, culture fit and computer skills. Like your culture, your culture of how you are as a person and just how your personality is and your zest for life has to be in alignment with that company and that person. Again, it's about do you have the skills and do I want to work with you? Mm -hmm. Right. To say it sense. bluntly, I mean, do I want to work with you all day? You yeah. might know how to. You might know how to do the best job at it, right? But if you're a, a negative person, I don't think I'm going to hire you. Right. I don't well, want to be around that. Even though I know you can do a good job, I'm just going to pick someone who can also do a good job, who's a, a positive person. Mm -hmm. Well, it could really, uh, you know, be a domino effect on a team too. It's like that one bad apple ruins a bunch, and I think that every hiring manager that has a good thing going with a good team, every time you bring somebody new into it, if the fit is off, it could throw off the entire team, which is a big risk for a hiring manager. So I think it is really important to show, you know, positivity and teamwork, and like you said, conflict re resolution skills, especially in a day when I know sometimes I will look back at a text I sent a week ago, and I'm like, oh, that sounded so rude. I didn't realize that, you know, at the period at the end of that text or whatever it is, sometimes things look um, a little bit more ab abrupt, you right. know, it's being able to 
communicate via technology is a whole it's a whole new skill that um, is an interesting thing to showcase because it's, it's funny. It's like you do have to pay attention to not just how you are portrayed in person speaking on the phone or on a video call, but how you are portrayed when you are um, only communicating via text in some right. way. So it, it's it's a lot of layers now. Yeah, There's you don't have body language to <laughs> support what you're saying. So people are just taking it as at face value, whatever you're typing or writing. Yeah, and the tone could be completely different than the tone you meant, right? So it's, yeah, you have to be super careful about it and, and really know how to diplomatically and friend and be friendly and, and know that it, it it's not personal. Like everybody, yeah. everybody's type is this is the world we live in. We're all typing it, and uh, you just kind of have to go with the flow. I think there's one more thing I wanted to mention was organizational skills. Because if you're working on your own in any job, right? Even if you're in the office, um, your organizational skills are very important. How you prioritize thing uh, things, but um, as, when you're working from home, you really need to have good organizational skills and good time management skills. And self-discipline also. That's yeah, true. it's kind of similar to taking a Penn Foster program, right? So you have all this additional yeah. flexibility and it's pretty convenient for you in some ways to, you know, work remotely or to study remotely or, you know, study where and when you want. But you do have to have those core skills, your, your own um, organizational skills, your own time management skills, um, your own self-initiative to make sure that you're getting what you need to get done, done. And I think that's a really important point. The things we can do with self-discipline, it's it's mm -hmm. boundless. We have to just make sure to keep ourselves in check sometimes. And and yeah, and it's your communication. You're going to build trust. You're going to build rapport with your coworkers and you, your colleagues. If especially if you're a new hire and you come on um, a board, you just want to you want to build those. You want to express your ideas clearly and, and build trust and 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 relationships with them. Yeah. That probably had nothing to do with what you said, but I had to throw that in there because it's important. <laughs> Sorry. It is important, but there's a, there's just so many things to to cover. And especially in the idea of, you know, we recently just did a, a, a Facebook Live about like kind of like what's in and out for 2021 compared to 2020. And there's just a lot of things to consider now. I mean, everything has changed, I think, so dramatically in the last year for everyone. And it's like, um, you know, how does it affect your home life? How does it affect your workplace? How does it affect your mindset? How does it affect finding a job? And it's just all of those things that I think, you know, now that we're starting a new year, it's just important to check in on every last one of these things and see what's changed since last year, because it, some things are quite different. So I think covering all the bases is, is very important and helpful. I'm sure you guys out there are all like, oh, I, you know, you know, maybe you're like, I didn't realize, you know, the different layers of communication, or I wasn't really thinking about doing that on my resume, you know, COVID specific stuff. So it's, I just find it really valuable personally. Awesome. All your details. Oh, always, always the best to have you, Kristen. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. Um, so say you're in an interview, I think one of the most nerve wracking parts sometimes is when they ask you if you have any questions for for me or like if I were the interviewer. Um, so what questions should you ask your interviewer? How do you prepare for that? Yeah, they always ask do you have any questions and you should have at least one question ready. Um, and you can write it down ahead of time and take notes during the interview if you want. But um, if they didn't tell you how long they've been there and if they like the company and how big the team is and stuff, ask that. Um, ask about the culture. Um, we talk a lot about culture, but they might not bring it up. And I have a lot of people ask me that. And I love that question when they ask me. They ask you what the company culture is like and what the work culture is like and how does the company support you? And I just love that question. So I think it's a great question to ask. What does company culture entail to you? So say you've never heard the term company culture or like what what a culture is at a in a workplace. Like what does that mean to you to hear? You know, how would you describe culture? It's the mindset and philosophy. So like at our at Penn Foster, our culture is is one of support. So the main focus is the student experience, right? We want the student experience to be positive. We want it to be supportive. We want to help them all the way from start to finish. Um, and so that's that's what we want to focus on. And um, 
Sorry. My phone's acting, my computer's acting up again. You look no, that's okay. clear to us. It's just, of course. So I'm sorry. <laughs> It's, I'm just glad that my dogs aren't acting up because that is, I know uh, some of you guys out there have heard my puppies work in the past. You never know with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, one sec. All right, I think we're good. I've lost my train of thought though. What was the question? So we were talking the about in foster specific culture and like what culture what culture, culture means, right? So yeah. culture is like the kind of environment you're going to work in, the mindset. So you want to know, um, how they're gonna support you, um, what kind of, you could ask about trainings. So what kind of a professional growth opportunities are there? What kind of training? That's gonna give you an idea of how, so really what you want to know when you're asking about work culture is what is it like to work there? How nice are you? How nice are you guys? <laughs> yeah. How nice are you guys? Are you reasonable people? So um, you want to know, you want to know what kind of, uh, people you're working for and what their overall philosophy and how they approach employees. So I would, and normally I'd say if you go to an office interview, look at the people working and see if they look happy. If they don't, don't work there. That's a good tip. <laughs> That's my advice. But you can't necessarily do this. So ask them some questions about culture. Um, see what their demeanor is like, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you like them and you, you think they're friendly and outgoing and you think, OK, I could work for this person, likely their team is is the same way. That's really good advice. It is. Because I think that's a fear for everybody. You know, I think when when you do say yes to a job, it's like it involves some commitment. So you want to make sure that you're also choosing the right job when you get the option. And I think one thing that can make everybody miserable is a miserable work environment. So <laughs> very yeah, important. Definitely. Yeah. I think probably questions about the company culture um, could show that you do have an that enthusiasm for oh, the yeah. job and for that sure. you are interested in being part of the team. So yeah. there are probably ways to ask questions like that that actually help you look better to your yes. interviewer. It shows initiative in a different yeah. way because you're, you're thinking outside the box, right? You're not just thinking about like, oh, instead of asking like, oh, when do you guys get raises? You can ask that at some point. Like, how often do you do performance evaluations? That's a good question to ask at some point in the interview or towards the end. Mm -hmm. But you'd want to stick to more things about personality and culture and things that apply to um, your your well-being in life, your life, work, home, life balance situation. That's that's what people respond and are most receptive to in interviews. Yeah, it's very human, you know, to talk about that stuff. It's just a lot better to connect with somebody on questions like that than just kind of, what are your benefits and what are the hours? And, you know, yeah, even and though that stuff's all important, of course. And you're asking questions and you're answering questions and you're in your, it's your time to highlight, right? It's yourself and shine and, and, and brag a little. You're not really bragging, um, mm -hmm. but be humble about it. You know, talk about your experience, um, how you can, how you can, you know, you're not the best at everything, but you're good at it and you can contribute and you know you can be good if you're given the chance and you just be excited about it. I keep saying that. And it's just, that's no, the best way to get be excited. It's be the excited most be important be part. I have a really quick question on the excitement thing. What if you are excited and you're just so darn nervous? You know, like what, when, do you have interviews where you see somebody who's really nervous and maybe they're enthusiastic, but you can just feel their you know, their nerves are like really uptight, really tightly wound to make sure they don't screw up. What does yeah. that appear like to you? Oof. It's tough. It happens all the time. Most most people are, are nervous in interviews, especially in a video. They're staring at me. They're staring at themselves. They're looking at their head. Like it's so nerve wracking. Right. <laughs> so it's normal. I, I I get it. Like I understand everybody's nervous. I figure they're nervous going in. Um, I think you can tell when someone's nervous, but I think if they try to truly answer honestly, and it's okay if you don't say it with complete conviction and confidence, mm -hmm. but be able to articulate your thought at least, and you should maybe write some things down ahead of time as well. But um, and it's okay to say it's okay to say, I'm sorry, I'm just really nervous. Mm -hmm. That's a great question, and I. I'm going to answer it, you know, and then you answer it. So, and if you need more time to think about a question, 
that is a good it's a good fallback to say you know or you can repeat the question to them so <laughs> and then it gives you a little bit more time to answer the question but it's okay to be nervous it's okay to say you're nervous um most people are nervous on interviews just yeah, try to do the best you can thing. practice ahead of time if you if you if you need to and we can I help practice, practice for this i mean i but I, you you get nervous right yeah i'm nervous now just doing this it oh, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, yes, but I'm saying it's normal, right? It's right, normal. Yeah. So just do the best you can. If you have to fake it for an interview and, and, and show that, like, set it aside and just be as cool as you can, um, just do the best you can. You can do it. And the more you do it, I think the more, like you yeah. said, practice, you just get more confident and yeah. it doesn't feel as like make or break if you're doing it a lot with, you know, with practicing. And like I said, or like you said too, um, you, you can always call in and, and get advice from us. We can help coach you through it. And just be yourself. Like, it's okay to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I'm nervous. But then you answer the question. Like right. that's gonna blow the interview. You it's being nervous is better to just interview. appear genuine. Yeah. That's more yeah. Very relatable. <laughs> yeah, if you have the skills and you, and you can do the job, that's what matters. But you have to be able to communicate it clearly. Right. So what advice would you give to students and grads that are looking for a job right now and they're applying for jobs? I would say look, look very closely at the job descriptions and brush up on computer skills and communication skills if you need to. Um, read some articles. Call Jamie Kapalko, our career coach. Um, she will help you, but the best thing you can do is get yourself professionally ready. Um, oh, another point is, uh, employers will Google you. Okay. So oh. your social media accounts, either Stop set them private or change your name, um, clean it up, whatever you need to do. Okay. Because they're going to Google you and they're going to look at your Facebook page. They're going to look at your, um, Instagram page. They're going to, you know, not that they should judge you on that alone. Not that it's right, but they will. First impressions matter. Right. Um, cultural yeah. fit, right? It's the same thing as a cultural fit. So if there's anything on there that's a red flag or something yeah. that just makes them uncomfy, then just do the, you know, do do yourself a favor and just send them all to private. Uh, create a professional email address, uh, put a mm -hmm. voicemail on there, and then just look online. Look, uh, look online in Indeed and other and other job postings there's tons of them out there um make sure your resume is up to date and in good format that's where jamie can come in and um customize it there's tons of jobs out there right now especially if you're looking for remote jobs yeah which is fun because that does open up a whole new job market you know yeah. it doesn't have to just totally. be your your is it in driving distance? You know, how much gas am I going to use to get there? So it is, there's some opportunity for remote jobs. And I, I know that not all jobs are remote, but uh, it's, um, it's a switch that might be in the benefit for some people if we can kind of get the swing of things, you know, adapt. And, 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 oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say really quickly, I know you've been mentioning um, our career coach, Jamie, a lot. So for everybody who's watching, I did just want to give you guys two ways to contact her. You can email her at careercoaches at penfoster.edu. Um, and then the phone number would be 1-800-572-1682, um, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. I would say too, that is a Penn Foster perk. So if that's, if you're a student or a graduate, uh, but if you're thinking about enrolling, if you know, you want to go to a school that trains you and gives you the, you know, the, some skills that can help you uh, take steps towards a new career and also helps you on your career path with things like resume building, interview tips, and in-depth career coaching, call admissions at 1-888-427-6500 and then you can get on your path um, to all of these Penn Foster perks that we have set up for you. Yes. <laughs> and we'll help you forever too. You can be a graduate for 10 years and if you call the career coaches and say, I'm looking for a new job and I need to update my resume and make it the modern way now, uh, we'll, we'll do it for you. 
So <laughs> yeah, because things change, right? Like the like career, yeah. like just from 2020 to 2021, um, yeah. things change. So it's oh, a, yeah. a lifetime. Once you're Penn Foster family, you're always Penn Foster family. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Speaking of things you can't expect, the sun is just blowing you. Over here, so. <laughs> Isn't it nice? It is nice to see some sunshine. <laughs> yeah. But well, speaking Chris, of beautiful sunshine, if you have it in your area, go enjoy it for a few minutes. Uh, it was good to be here with you guys today. I had so much fun, Kristen. It was so nice to have you back. Yes, thank you I'm, so much. I'm sure we'll do a follow-up. We'll be going through the comments and seeing everything you guys have to say um, a little bit more in depth after this. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thanks, Kristen. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Good Bye. luck. Bye-bye. <laughs>